Record video. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyana Muhammad. Wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Amma ba'd habati fillah. No doubt, plain and simple, we need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. We need Allah Azza wa Jal's assistance, His help, His support, His favor, His forgiveness, His guidance, His grace, His mercy, His bounties. We need it all from Him, Tabarak wa Ta'ala. This is why we speak about Tawheedillah so much. Because who else are you going to go to? Who else can you depend upon? Who else, who else can you seek favor and assistance from but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And the religion of Islam... The Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they show us that it's about worshiping Allah Tabarak Ta'ala, it's about Tawheedillah, it's about Ibadah to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. If we give up that and we go against the Nasus, we go against the text, we begin to accept, for example, the riba interest because we say it's a durura. Now, I'm not going to debate that issue right now. And that's an issue that definitely requires knowledge and thick and going deep into the Messiah of when it's a durora and a hajjah and etc. And those ahkam, we prefer that that it goes back to the kibar ulama, you know, to major scholars who know those duabit and make darasa of those Messiah. But just when we open that door, and we begin to involve ourselves with things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes war. Allah wa Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam make war on that, on those who take riba. So how is it, who and how can you withstand and defend yourself against that? Now again, these are Messiah we're talking about. Of course, obviously, the Rora. The problem is when you open these doors, you say something is a necessity, you say something is a Rora, so this is just food for thought. That you're on a dangerous cusp with your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if it's a Rora, of course, like eating pork to sustain your life, or drinking alcohol to sustain your life. But... So that's the first thing is looking at, is it really a necessity? Is it really a, a hajjah? The second issue, habit I want to mention, is the dangers of tawassa fi fi mas'ala, meaning of going beyond the bounds. For example, there will be people, they'll say, hey, it's a necessity. Well, you know, it's a necessity. I need a new car. I have a car, but I need a really new one because, you know, my work is far. I need a really nice one. So I'm going to get a respectable one. So, of course, I need to take an interest loan on that. Well, you know, you can't make it in the society for your children. Your children need to go to college. So let's now then take Reba loans. Well, you see the danger of how those, how it opens up and how it goes from one necessity to another and you begin to readapt and redefine what is a hajj or what is a necessity, what is a durura and so forth. What is a need and what is a necessity? Those are two different duwabit that the scholars mention, a hajj and a durura need and necessity and it opens up a dangerous door and this you begin to really redefine the character of Islam this is what I see and I believe this in my heart from what I've seen and I think what we will see because when you make this the norm everyone's got a necessity or you begin with that supposed necessity and then everyone it becomes the norm in the community where everyone will just accept, okay, so Muslims all have houses pretty much because they can get the mortgage for those who can get the mortgage from the bank. For minorities, especially certain categories of people, it's much more difficult. 
it's another story. So when you open that door, it becomes a norm. And then a whole new, whole new characters and traditions become the norm regarding Islam. What I mean by that is everything, tasaha and everything. And there's whole movements, progressive movements. So then you'll find that music is no problem as long as you listen to certain categories of music. First, it'll begin with Anishit. Then it'll move to Islamic music. Well, you know, it's only for the children or it's only for our youth and it's only for us to remember Allah. Then, next thing you know, it's Islamic dances. Then it moves to Islamic ikhtalat, mixing. Well, you know, we're dancing, but we don't, we date, but we don't uh, really touch that much. And then we know where it goes from there. You think that this is something strange, but we already see a lot of this happening in a lot of the so-called progressive movements, modernists. Today, we have this in the West, we have this in America, we have this in the UK already, you know. And some of it is actually been substantiated, if you will, or been made into movement, meaning that they actually have whole organizations and social networking groups that do this already. So what's next? So this is why I encourage myself first, because it, it, it can damage your heart. If you see everyone else in society doing it, you see everyone else advancing because they're doing it. In the dunya, for example, if you see whole groups of people, they all have houses, they all have this. You're struggling to, to just pay rent, to just survive, and you're hopefully on the sunnah. Whereas they discard a lot of the book and a lot of the sunnah, and you see that they are vibrant in their community. Their children are engineers, they're getting educated, they're doing this, they're doing that. This can cause you to question your methodology, to question your Islam. Are you understanding it right? Do you, have they got it right? And so this is why I say it's so important to continually go back to the book and the sunnah and be around Ahl Sunnah and listen to Ahl Sunnah and the ulama Ahl Sunnah and seek advice from the scholars of Ahl Sunnah and fatawa from them. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're a class with the bat. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ala nabiyyana Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi. Wa sallam.